Welcome to Kanoho News. Coming up on this program, Mayor Tangy makes her inaugural speech and we interview the head of the police force about the recent spike in crime. The results are in for the mayoral election, and what a historic election it was. Our new mayor is Sir Tangy VII, who won with a landslide majority of 75%. Mayor Tangy and Vice Mayor Terra promise to decrease homelessness, increase happiness, and bring the community together. But will they deliver? We now go live to Kanoho City Hall, where Mayor Tangy is making her inaugural speech. <laughs> Hello, great citizens of Kanoho. I am your half-mayor, Sir Tangy VII. I thank you and would like to congratulate you for voting me in by a landslide. I hope that I can live up to all of your expectations. My first decree as mayor is to get rid of the law against train noises. Feel free to make them as you please. Thank you for listening and enjoy your next 24 hours. I, I will find you. We have just received breaking news that a resistance group has already formed and taken to the streets. Who are these people? What has the mayor done to upset them so early into her term? Let's see if our anonymous member of the resistance can cast some light on the situation. So I wasn't too happy with how the mayoral candidate was uh, controlling Kanoho, and I felt something needed to be done about it. Whether it be me, for the people, with the people, I wasn't quite sure, but I knew that the mayor had to go down. What are the Resistance's plans? Will this usher in a new age of violence for the city? We do not know. However, they have purchased an attack helicopter, a foreboding sign of what's to come. Anyway, back to our scheduled stories. Another group who's taking Mayor Tangy's rise to power badly is mayoral candidate Mr. Thonk, who, after the crushing defeat of the election, established a cult, setting up a church in the mall and multiple religious sites around the world. As is with most cults, the Thonk cult has a dark secret, and in a complete burst of hypocrisy, is suspected for animal abuse. These allegations were made after a normal inspection at Thonk Schools for People with Square Brains discovered a secret basement. Thonk has since retreated into their home, erecting disturbing mannequins donning masks of their face in every window. We now go live to Thonk's house, where a SWAT team is preparing to infiltrate the building. Uh, there have been reports from this neighborhood of screaming coming from this house, so we decided to check it out. Um... Excuse me, KPD here. Um, can you please open the door? We don't negotiate with ferrets. Go, 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 go! <laughs> That's not it! Put your hands in the air! You'll never take me alive! <laughs> There's too many cats! <laughs> I can't find them! There's cats everywhere! They've got away. I think we've lost them. In other news, residents of local town Uwuville were recently startled by the sudden appearance of a mountain near their marketplace. The mountain appeared overnight, and there isn't believed to be any casualties. However, residents are still looking for who to blame, and considering Kanoho is home to multiple deities capable of causing such an event, they're not short on suspects. Scientists are advising citizens to stay clear of the area, as the mountain's mystical properties are not yet understood. Exacerbated by early expeditioners claiming to have been transported to a city where magic is real and something about a place called Alvalon. This hasn't, however, stopped Kanoho's industrial magnates from establishing outposts in the area to exploit this new fountain of resources. The mountain isn't the only thing changing the landscape in Uwuville, however. The current mayor has been investing in modernising the famously majestic village, while still keeping its historic feel. This upgrade was much needed, as many of the buildings had fallen into disrepair. 
We now join the mayor of Uvum himself, Little Twig, who's on location at one of the construction sites. Hello, I am here now with Little Twig. Now, Twig, what is your reasoning behind redesigning Uwuville, a famously beautiful village? Well, you see, some of this area was uh, a little bit outdated, so I decided, you know what, might as well live it up a little bit, liven okay. the place up. Okay, fair enough. Um, did you design these new buildings and this new landscape yourself? Yeah, <laughs> I, I built everything by scratch, no help needed. Fair enough. Um, so, do you have any plans to expand Uwuville further past its borders in the future? Probably, but it's a little bit top secret for later on. Oh, top secret. You heard it here first, folks. Well, thank you for spending some time with us, Twig. Konoho City has experienced its largest ever growth in population during the last few months, but this has also come with an increase in crime rate. With the police force proving more and more inadequate, potion dealings have become commonplace in the back alleys of Konoho. The police have issued a warning about reality collapsing potions, a positively preposterous potion which has become most popular with potion junkies. We now join Terra, who is with McRev, ex-mayor and head of the police force. Indeed, I am here with McGrubs outside the police station. So, McGrubs, what are you doing to quell the rampant, um, growing crime weights in Kanoho? I, I am issuing warnings about the laws and trying to make sure that everyone is obeying them. And in case we do have some disobedient little people, then we do, we will be haste to send them to the prison. Sounds reasonable. And what do you have to say to citizens in possession of illegal potions? Well, the potions themselves are not currently illegal based off of the current laws imposed by the government. Utilising them against other people is, however, illegal. Therefore, you will be able to be sent to the prison for a very long time. All right. Back to you in the studio. In some good news, Konoho has finally got cars again. Early entrepreneurs attempted to introduce cars to our city a year ago, but the design f suffered from a fatal flaw, causing the population to be inflicted with a terrible disease, colloquially known as lag. These new cars, however, do not suffer from the same issue, and can be purchased for only 250 ker from Twig Car, located near the mall. Anyway, that's all we have time for this week on Kanoho News. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a court trial I need to avoid about a certain pig. Ta-ta!